Well, some new things have developed in my life. So I'm going to see what the tarot deck says about my current situation and what to expect out of it. And let me be sort of clear. Like, I don't necessarily believe that there's like a... Uh, a spirit behind the cards so much as it's just the universe or you can say synchronicity or God or whatever trying to communicate to me through cards and some people might say that oh it's evil spirits it's evil spirits and I say no I have enough faith in God to know that he is more powerful he, she, it, the all, whatever, is more powerful than anything. And if I just have faith, I have faith in the universe. It's going to take care of me. It always has. So let me chop it a couple times. All right, this is the card from the universe to me. Let's see here. A whole bunch of. This is the Alice in Wonderland tarot deck. And it's the magician. So, this is what the magician has. See exactly what it says, but just looking at that card. Pretty cool looking card. <laughs> the little worm with. Look at all the little weapons of the worm. Like a club and a sword and a cup. And a coin. All right, let's see what the magician's about. That's the first card in the deck. <clears throat> Through the looking glass, this is a metaphor. Like all fabulous archetypes, symbols, and the best fictional characters, the caterpillar is complex and can convincingly be many of the tarot cards from the high priestess which is with his insistence that Alice knows herself to the hierophant with constant questioning forcing Alice to communicate clearly but here he is the magician the master manifester and the one who understands how the elements of the world can be used to achieve one's goals. The hookah is an excellent symbol for working with the elements. While we do not see the inner workings of the hookah here, traditionally they use tobacco and honey, which represents earth, burning charcoal, which represents fire, water, which represents water, and of course the smoke represents air. Another important aspect of the magician is the focus on the self, the ego, the one's own identity. In his dialogue with Alice, the caterpillar is consistently referencing the divide between his experience and Alice's experience. When Alice complains that she doesn't like changing sizes too often, you know, he replies, I don't know. The magician marks the point in the human experience when we realize that we are separate from other people and in some ways from the divine this of course is not the whole truth as we will see in the high priestess in biological terms when some think that this happens at the moment of birth when a baby is literally separated from its mother it happens at various points throughout our lives as well and is part of the continuing dichotomy of the human experience the pull between separation and unity. One of the reasons understanding our separateness is important is because until we realize we are a complete unique being, we cannot understand that as such. We have our own will. It is our will that gives us the power and autonomy to create what we want in the world. This is the definition of magic. Without the key understandings of individuality and will, we cannot understand what we are capable of. There is much more to magic and manifestation, though, uh, though, and a caterpillar knows that. 
is mushroom and hookah, which are not expounded upon in the text, very subtly hint at an imagination and opening the mind to things beyond normal perception. Knowing what one wants is also important. The caterpillar asks Alice what she wants and then argues with her a bit to help her clarify whether or not she is certain of her will. When he is convinced that she knows her own mind, he tells Alice that one side... Mm, of the mushroom will make her taller and the other side smaller. In doing so, he shows his understanding of how the subtle differences in matter or energy can create very different effects. In this image, the caterpillar has opened his mind to imagine a sword, a wand, a cup, and a pentacle, which we see in the smoke he exhales. Once he has formed these ideas as if by magic, he manifests them as real items. In reading, the magician reminds us that before we can effectively manifest or wield our magic with precision, we must be clear on several key points. First, we must recognize that we are unique beings with free will, and with that will comes power and responsibility. Second, we must understand ourselves and know what we actually want. Without that clarity, everything we do will be con a confused mess debate and discussion with those who oppose us are willing to play devil's advocate to help us to achieve clarity. Sometimes the more conversation with those who agree with us or support us. Finally, we must understand the fundamental ways of elemental energy. The physical world, for all its appearance of solidness, is made of energy. Yes, we can often do what we wish, but only if we know the potential and possibilities of the materials at hand. Keywords, will, talent, skill, creativity, manifestation, communication, magic, action, awareness, power, resourcefulness, concentration, and eloquence. Pretty good. Pretty good. So, in doing what I've been doing today, like I've contacted almost... Well, first off, I had a very, very long conversation on the phone with the police. And while talking to the police, I recorded the entire length of the conversation through video. <laughs> and then I wrote a long-ass letter. And I attached that to the video and sent it to every newsroom I could possibly send it to. Uh... There's a lot going on in my life right now, and I feel like I need to speak up before my voice is potentially stripped from me. Uh, it will be a, a Greek tragedy if I get silenced uh, this late in life, but... Uh, I mean, I'm willing to accept whatever happens. Like, I've been just go with the flow. Uh, peace, love, and forgiveness, like, no matter what happens at the end of this, like, I'm going to stay being me throughout the process as much as I possibly can. Like, I know that sometimes dealing with some stuff is, like, pretty hard, but, uh, I feel like it's always, always just more tests, more tests to see, you know, test my grit, my fortitude, my ability to stay mindful, conscious, calm, I feel like once you get upset, you've already lost. Like, that is literally my philosophy in life, is if you get upset, you've already lost. And I'm innocent, so I don't have any fears of anything backfiring on me in that way. Uh, but I do understand that the system is a little, it's a little crazy. And I'm a Pisces, so I guess anybody else who may be going through some weird stuff right now, you could say that that's your card too. But learn, know who you are, manifest. And let me uh, let me pull another card for. We'll just say what? Who do I want to pull another card for? 
Who do I want to flip another card for? We'll just say I'm going to pull this card for the person who has made it to the end of for the people that have made it to the end of this video and actually care about what I have to say at the end of this video. You can this card's for you. People that care enough to be at the end of this video listening to this. This card is for you and what is going on in your life or what's going to happen in your life. So All right, the Three of Swords. A little big old heart cake with a bunch of the swords through it. Three of Swords. It's an interesting, interesting card. I wish I knew exactly what all it was. Like, when I look at this, I just see, like, this heart-shaped cake with a bunch of knives. There's a chunk missing out of it. It's sitting out in the middle of a barren desert. So, like, there's... Like it's, I don't know, like a loving cake in the middle of isolation or something. I don't know. Like I'm sure I always miss some kind of details on these things. I don't really see anything here. But anyways, let's see what the Three of Swords has to say. <clears throat> through the looking glass this is the metaphor throughout Alice's adventure she learns many things that shakes her sense of re reality for example she learns that rules are sometimes arbitrary and don't always make sense rule 42 that some questions don't have answers why is a raven like a writing desk sometimes you have to choose between two evils the walrus and the carpenter and that her own identity and reality can be questioned the caterpillar and the red king's dream if a theme of the Alice stories is the journey towards adulthood a sub theme is that your response to these reality shifting situations shape the person you will become Beautiful ideas about our relationships, our society, our world, and ourselves are treasures, and we respect them as well as we can. Not all of these ideas stand up to the test of time and experience. They dissolve like cake in the rain, and we are left with an unappealing mess. The lovely treat is gone, but the truth, like the sword, remain. Acclimating to this new reality isn't always easy. In the end, though, they add depth to our souls, and by bringing contrast to our lives, they also bring richness to the complex beauty of life. Down the rabbit hole, this is the inner reading. The card acknowledges and honors a hard truth that we have learned. Something precious, something we valued, has been forever changed. We are probably deeply saddened, heartbroken even, and can't imagine how we will reclaim that bit of goodness that we've lost. We all survive these experiences, and even though things will never be the same again, we also adapt to our new reality. The human spirit has a great capacity to thrive. Even though it feels like it's going to be a long time before you can move on, an important lesson to bring forward is to continue to hold on to the truth you've gained. Hold on to it, but don't let it become a prison of bitterness or a weapon to keep others out. Keywords, unwelcome knowledge, painful truths, heartbreak, heartache, betrayal, disloyalty, and unfaithfulness. Wow. Crazy, crazy, crazy. So, like... I mean, I know that this does not apply to every single person in the world. But I know that, let's take like my best friend, for instance, his name's Josh. You know, like me and him had a big falling out. For like a year, we didn't even talk to each other. And then one day, I pulled up in his driveway. He came out on his front porch. We fist bumped, and we've been tight as hell ever since. It's like that one year of, like, massively hating each other. 
now we're tighter than we've ever been. Like closer, more trust, more vulnerability. I'm getting all fat like him. <laughs> if you're watching this. <laughs> But, uh, but I mean, sometimes like going through those hardships can forge people into being something stronger and greater. You know, maybe in that time period I was away from him, he got to grow in ways that he wouldn't have had I been there to, you know, help him or enable him or same thing, vice versa. Maybe, you know, he could have been enabling me to do some of my past stuff or made, made it easier on me to do any of my past things but but we definitely parted ways for a little bit we were given an opportunity to grow on our own and then when we came back together we were just stronger and just worked it worked out better together like understood each other more anyways uh y'all have a good night i love you love y'all love all y'all Mm. Hope y'all have enjoyed this.